Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, Cabinet approves Building Regulations 2022, expected to guide the country's post-Maria reconstruction efforts. Government commissions newly rehabilitated Will Stratmore Stevens Primary School. And Grand Bay moves closer to building greater resilience with progress on farm access and housing infrastructure projects. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. This is CARICOM Secretary General Irwin Larock. I took the jab, the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm encouraging you, my brothers and sisters, to join me. Take the jab and observe the protocols. We're saving lives and jobs. Welcome back. Cabinet has reviewed existing building codes and approved the Building Regulations 2022 to guide the country's post-Maria reconstruction efforts. The approved building codes are expected to strengthen the Physical Planning Act, which already contains requirements for any planning development. Since Hurricane Maria, Dominica has sought to rebuild using more stringent construction codes, as there was a felt need for more strict regulations for different types of construction. Post-Hurricane Maria, there were a number of consultations. There were discussions with the Builders Association, the Architects, the Engineers Association. We had the input of the OECS Commission. We were fortunate to have the support of the UN, UNDP in particular, Engineers Without Border, who were on island assisting us in seeking to, to rebuild. Um, of course, the Physical Plan Division played a very important role. So, so we were able to evaluate the impact and to look for the lessons to be learned and, and those fed into what we now have as the new building regulations because we, we really took the time and to have broad discussions, there was various cross-sections of the society, private sector, homeowners, and to really hear from them and to understand and to, to sort of investigate on site because it was fresh, mm -hmm. you know, the impact was there. And out of that came about some guidelines and emanating out of that are the regulations. The regulations are expected to serve as the measuring stick against which compliance with the building codes will be measured. The code really, it sets out the standard for construction. So any, anything in the built environment, as my, my good friend, um, the chief um, physical planner likes to say, anything in the built environment, anything that is, that, that is defined as a development is in fact, would fall under what are, what are considered the standards for construction. The regulation is really the enforcement part of it. So the regulation speaks to how it gives the details of what needs to be done and how it's to be monitored, supervised, and, and of course, enforced. So, so, so essentially what it, what it does is to give us the, the guidelines, the, the instruction manual, as it were, as to what should be done to ensure that people can adhere to the standards of construction. The acting chief physical planner points to a number of lessons learned in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, lessons which serve to inform the strengthened building codes. A few of the key lessons that we, um, we learned during that is that the implementation of the code itself, we had some flaws in there or some gaps. So we had some um, lack of compliance to the standards, the location, of certain buildings because if you are in an area that is exposed to, higher, to hazards then the likelihood of impact is increased and your likelihood of, of damage is increased. So we saw that the locations of, of certain um, buildings or the built environment um, infrastructure um, played a part in that. We also saw the lack of um, the quality of materials um, that we use for construction we had some gaps in that as well. So those are the, the key areas that we recognized that we needed to um, have some stringer enforcement um, play a role. Ms. Dorival outlines the buildings and structures to which the new code applies. Any structure that is over 
2,500 square foot mm -hmm. and a structure that is more than two stories um, tall. Um, any structure that is for commercial purposes, industrial purposes, institutional purposes, mm -hmm. um, engineering works. So um, a city fence wall would have to go through the, the rigors of the, the code as well. All structures fall under the guidelines, but there are categories. Now, section 18 of the code, um, which refers to small structures, is also what we call the building guidelines. And what we did after Hurricane Maria is we also had the Dominica standards for uh, housing. The Dominica, the guidelines, sorry, the, the guidelines to the Dominica housing standards. Th that document is directly taken from the building guidelines. So that is to help the everyday homeowner with how to repair their roof, what are the standards for your roof, what are the standards for your foundation, how wide your, your kitchen windows need to be for ventilation. And so, so those aspects are detailed in the section 18. So technically, all structures all fall within <coughs> under the premise of the code, but it's just the... The different categorizations. Right. The government of Dominica commissioned the newly rehabilitated Will Stratmore Stevens Primary School on Friday. The students will now have a more enhanced learning environment as the government of Dominica continues to create child-friendly schools across the island. The Will Stratmore Stevens Primary School was damaged during Hurricane Maria in 2017 and got a facelift as the government of Dominica and the government of Canada jointly financed its rehabilitation. Senior Minister Honorable Reginald Ostry says the investment that the Dominica Labour Party government is making provides a solid foundation for improving student learning and performance and supporting the students as they grow and learn. Ultimately, we want to see students succeed in schools and establish the skills, the knowledge and readiness they will need to contribute in adults in a challenging world. By developing healthy school environment, we can set students up for success in the classroom and beyond. All of our research points to the fact that when students feel safe and confident in a school setting, they miss fewer classes and are less likely to engage in risky or antisocial behavior and achieve higher performance levels. Other benefits of a healthy school environment include increased parental involvement to the school activities and higher staff morale and productivity. Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, Honorable Octavia Alfred, thanked the development partners for the assistance given during the construction process. The government of Dominica is grateful to our partners for delivering this impressive new structure that truly caters to the needs of the entire community. We believe that four essential components of a healthy school environment are appropriate classroom learning experiences, firm and pu purposeful school management, supportive parents, and a welcoming school environment. This building has certainly satisfied the need for a welcoming and safe learning environment. Minister of State in the Ministry of the Blue and Green Economy, Agriculture and National Food Security, Honorable Gregory Rivera, says when the government of Dominica makes a promise to its people, it keeps the promise. He says this is evident with the rehabilitation of the Will Stratmore Stevens Primary School. This is another major achievement in the constituency, an achievement that brings to light the principle of a promise made, a promise kept. Certainly, when this Labour Party administration makes a promise, it keeps it. And standing here today is testament, evidence, proof, and witness to that fact that when we make a promise, we keep that promise. Minister Rivière called on the teachers and students of the school to take care of the gift given to them by the two governments. Margot Neda, this are we school. This are we school. And we have to take care of it. The Will Stratmore Stevens School is more appealing, more conducive to learning, more friendly, teacher friendly. And of course, it is a more resilient school. We have to take care of our school and take care of its surrounding. We have to plant flowers. 
beautify the area. Let us come together as a people and give back to the school. Let's not all about what I can get, what I can get, but what is it that I can contribute to the success of the school. Member of Parliament for the Marigot constituency, Honorable Lennox Linton, expressed gratitude for the newly rehabilitated primary school. I stand as the parliamentary representative for the Marigot constituency, pleased to say how grateful Marigot is for this refurbished institution. $2.1 million was spent to complete the rehabilitation of the Will Stratmore Stevens Primary School. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. In this edition of the In-Depth Report, over $1 million EC invested in the Brenda Strafford Foundation Eye Center, commissioned here on Thursday, 12th May, 2022. Featured speaker at the official opening ceremony, Senator the Honorable Cassani Laville noted that beyond the science-based approach which the clinic is known for, particular attention will be given to ensuring that equipment used will be regularly maintained for reliability and consistency of service. With the commissioning of this facility, we are assured the provision of state-of-the-art, evidence-based ophthalmology services to the citizens of Dominica. The provision of equipment and financial support amounts to about 1.06 million Eastern Caribbean dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, this is significant. But not only that. The value is, expect, is expected to grow over the next few years. Under the agreement with the Brenda Strafford Foundation, we will also see the implementation of a robust preventative maintenance program of all eye equipment to ensure efficiency and the provision of supplies. And not only that, and consumables to sustain patient care. Honorable Laville says government is grateful for the opportunity given to citizens by the Brenda Strafford Foundation to benefit from quality eye care. The new eye center is expected to impact the lives of not only Dominicans but patients from across the wider Caribbean region. As part of this transformation, we expect visiting subspecialists in ophthalmology to now have a center to provide their services to Dominicans and people from overseas. It is also expected that the doctors pursuing their postgraduate studies in ophthalmology will have the option now to choose Dominica to complete their training, while rotations for interns and nurses will continue with improved experiences. Our hope as a government is that this new facility will serve as a center of excellence, allowing us to build on the regional alliances through provision of eye care services to citizens of neighboring territories. The Brenda Strafford Foundation Eye Care Center is a manifestation of a promise made and promise kept by the Roosevelt Serrett-led administration. The Labour Party government prides itself in fulfilling its promises. In our 2019 Dominica Labour Party manifesto, we pledged to upgrade the national health care system and reduce the number of medical interventions and services for which our nationals had to travel abroad. We have seen the metamorphosis of that pledge into policy, and now this 2019 pledge is swiftly becoming a reality for many of our Dominicans. Ladies and gentlemen, good, sustainable upgrades and quality transformation cannot happen overnight. This also certainly does not happen by accident. This healthcare transformation that we see that is taking place right here in Dominica now is steeped in progressive thinking. 
The minister says this transformation taking place in Dominica's healthcare system is a result of compassionate listening to the plight of Dominicans and the recognition of that basic human right to have access to quality healthcare. It is a transformation with a sense of urgency for our people, one that is built and guided by coalition and enlists the local and external partnerships and authorities in healthcare. We are taking a truly sustainable approach with strategic vision and enabling actions to generate results that will improve the service and care for our people. As it stands right now, there are a number of diagnostic services that are currently available in Dominica, which are non-existent in some islands in the region. Minister Laville noted that advanced medical equipment such as the high-intensity focused ultrasound HIFU service commissioned recently, as well as MRI service, is all part of efforts to position Dominica to provide advanced health care and services. He added that the idea is really to provide access to these advanced health care services to citizens without them having to incur financial hardship. The Brenda Strafford Foundation Eye Center is the fruit of a combined mission to provide state-of-the-art and evidence-based ophthalmology services to Dominicans. Over 45 years ago, Dr. Barry Strafford created the Brenda Strafford Foundation guided by the philosophy, the preservation of dignity, and the pursuit of happiness. He loved helping people in need. Over the years, he also developed a real passion for bringing accessible, and high-quality eye care to various countries in the Caribbean. For 40 years now, the Brenda Strafford Foundation has operated the Institute Brenda Strafford in Lake High, Haiti. The Institute has a full-time staff of over 100 people, including permanent ophthalmology and ENT surgeons, and serves over 250 patients a day, or 5,000 patients a month. We're very proud of the fact that the Institute in Lake Kai, Haiti has shorter wait times than any province in the, in the country of Canada. In, in Jamaica, the foundation has partnered with Vic Canada Vision Care to bring much needed ophthalmology and optometry services to the people of the greater Montego Bay area and within Jamaica. And today we celebrate and honor the legacy of Dr. Strafford and his commitment to support world-class eye care to the people of Dominica. As with any worthwhile project, the establishment of this new eye care facility in Dominica did not come without its challenges. Even more recently, faced with the unpredictable and formidable challenges of a devastating hurricane and a global pandemic, there are good reasons why this eye clinic may not have happened at all. But this world-class state-of-the-art eye center now stands in tribute to the resilience, perseverance, and commitment of all of the partners here today. The Dominica Hospitals Authority is looking to raise the bar in terms of how services provided in this new eye care center. It is the intention of the office of the CEO to take the following proposal to the board, that with effect June 1, 2022, there will be a moratorium on all private elective admissions for the next three months. During this time, we will use the full capacity of the department towards reducing the waiting times for appointments and reduce the waiting list for elective surgeries, especially cataract surgeries. We want to reassess all patients on the merit of need and not ability to pay. in particular, the elderly and emergency cases. All patients who are now awaiting a date for eye surgery are asked to make an appointment for reassessment in order to secure a pointed date on when surgery will become available. When the decision was taken to have this eye care center built as part of construction of the Dominica China Friendship Hospital, the intent to have it become a center for excellence of eye care. In 2020, when the Memorandum of Understanding was signed between the government of Dominica and the Brenda Strafford Foundation, it was not a matter of merely waiting to sign an MOU. It was envisaged 
that a state-of-the-art building would be fully equipped with the state-of-the-art equipment, the ministry would be well poised to be better managers of eye care disease. We realize that even with best primary health care system in place, there will be those who require higher level eye care. Dr. Hazel Chillingford Ricketts is head of the ophthalmology department. She has three ophthalmologists on staff who will also be available for surgery six days a week. As people live longer and the population increases and there is an increased prevalence of non-communicable diseases like diabetes mellitus, the number of people go being blind increases. In 1999, the World Health Organization and the International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness recognized this increasing public health problem. In 2000, the initiative Vision 2020, the right to sight, was launched the preventable causes of blindness to be addressed in the Caribbean are cataracts, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, refractive errors, that is the need for glasses, and childhood blindness. And childhood blindness is not that because we have many of them, but when a child gets blind, they have to live their whole life being blind. So the number of blind years are very large. So it is important that we avoid our children going blind. Parliamentary representative for Grand Bay constituency, Honorable Vince Henderson, says as far as farm access roads and housing projects in his constituency are concerned, they are making progress. Mr. Henderson says he is very encouraged by the support received. We have already completed the, the, the entrance, so the section leading to the intersection where the two roads meet, mm -hmm. that has been completed with our, our own um, local contractors. We, we got that done. The, the actual, the big portion that is being done with $1.5 million from the, the EU funds, that is being done by um, Public Works. Mm -hmm. We have had some delays, admittedly, but we met on site on Monday and, and there's a plan to, to speed up. We may have some delays, but we will catch up eventually and, and I'm happy to see that the road will, will really a assist um, several farmers along that way, especially Makato side. Mm -hmm. On the MOPO side, we, are, we continue to do some improvements where we can uh, to ensure that we can address the worst areas so that farmers can have better access to their farms. So, so work is ongoing and we, we're very happy about that. In terms of the, the housing development, we have been providing support to several families, uh, especially to complete houses that were damaged you know, from, from Hurricane Maria and efforts were on the way. So there, these were constructions that started and we're completing them. So we are doing our own support, direct support to, to families. And, and, and again, with, with the approval of, of recent assistance we received, we've been able to, to execute that. The big project, though, that we're looking forward to is the center housing development, mm -hmm. which will house some of the residents of Dubik who already actually residing in that area, but lost their houses um, after the passage of Hurricane Maria. But the, and the residents of Grand Bay will benefit directly. So we're, work has started, some contractors have been on the ground and moving on, the, the site has been prepared and we see, we see in that some work have started. We're really looking forward to, to that project because it is not only housing, again, in keeping <coughs> with resilience. resilience how, resilient houses, but a resilient community because mm -hmm. we'll be building other supporting facilities, you know, um, especially especially government buildings, um, the fire and ambulance services, we will be improving a number of, of the facilities. The community center as well. The community center, well, even the church. The church. And we will ensure that there's, there's a, a, a sustainable community that is also resilient. Mm -hmm. And that's all for the English segment of the news. Up next, the Creole Highlights with Shakira Pierre-John. Bienvenue pour Nouvelle Creole, non moins c'est Shakira Pierre-John. Gouvernement Dominique commissionné l'école première Will Strathmore Stevens vendredi qui passé. C'est ici là que actuellement il y a meilleur place pour y apprendre que le gouvernement Dominique a continué pour bâtir l'école pour qui ni bien bon environnement ou un pays là. L'école première Will Strathmore Stevens a été dommagée par cyclone Maria en l'année 2017. Et puis réhabilitation sera financée par le gouvernement Dominique et puis le gouvernement Canada et puis aussi le Caribbean Development Bank. Le Senior ministre, Honorable Reginald Austri, dit investissement le gouvernement de l'Ebo a fait en affaires éducation. 
C'est pour Portuguay yon fondation qui bien bon pour faire certains tout étudiants yon place pour yon apprendre à dire. Ministre pour l'Affaire éducation, Honorable Octavia Alfred, oui, merci, c'est moun la qui collabore et puis gouvernement pour faire réhabilitation, ça la possible. Honorable Alfred dit, il est bien content comme ministre éducation là, c'est étudiant là à Marigot, ni yon main place pour yon venir l'école. Il dit ça qui fait, c'est étudiant là fait plus meilleur en affaire l'école yon. Ministre Honorable Gregory Rivière aussi parle bon contre projet ça là. Il dit le gouvernement là fait yon promet ba moun, yon ka chen promet ça là, et puis l'école première Will Strife Moore Stevens, c'est évidence que gouvernement là ka chen promet yon. Ministre Rivière, qui a sur tous ces teachers là et puis ces étudiants là pour chen cadeau ça là bien bon. Il dit yon ke plante flè et puis chen environ la net tout le temps. Aussi, mam parle ma la pour constituency Marigot, Honorable Lennox Linton, pour opportunité la pour vous remercier le gouvernement Dominique et le gouvernement Canada pour réhabilitation de l'école première la. Il aussi créé à si yo pour faire cette yo occupé l'école la. Réhabilitation de l'école première Will Straff Moss Stevens est fait à valer 2.1 million de dollars. Mais quoi d'ici même passé, le gouvernement aussi commissionné de l'école à l'ouest pays la. Étudiants ont l'école première d'Elis et puis mon John aussi n'y ont l'école neuf pour Portuguay. Ils ont un environnement qui bien bon pour y'a apprendre. Le gouvernement continue pour investir en éducation à Dominique. Quand après le cycle de Maria, ils ont pris l'école de réhabilité et puis ils ont bâti l'école de Salah pour prendre changement climatique quand Dominique a son mission pour venir pour le pays là, à la terre là, qui s'apprend changement climatique. À d'autres nouvelles, le gouvernement Dominique a recognisé le niveau d'activité qui est bien nécessaire pour développer l'industrie touriste. Le ministre pour les affaires touristes, Honorable Dennis Charles, parle de ça et de ces actions là en la de ce que le ministre de la a mené attention à ce tourisme à Dominique. Moi, là, pour mener attention à ce tourisme, je vous observé pendant le mois mai tous les années. Pour moi, ça là, le ministère de la Cata pays bien nécessaire pour mener attention à ce plan yoni pour prendre l'avantage de l'environnement là. Le ministère de la dit que les gens qui engagent dans le secteur de tourisme ont besoin de soins. Honorable Charles dit que la Dominique Authority prend la charge là pour protéger les gens qui ont offert des services en tourisme industriel pour et puis de soins qui sont bien critiques à comment pour les deal et puis les coûts. Le ministère de la dit que quand Dominique a sorti en pandémie, il a mis une attention à attention à ce soutien pour enhancer les services que nous avons offert pour arriver à un standard qui est 5 étoiles, qui est à Sam et puis ses accommodations. Aussi, il a mis un effort à mettre à ce support pour ces holders et puis la beautification nationale et puis le gouvernement qui est en compétition de la beautification de la ville Dominique. Le ministère de la a continué pour faire toute manœuvre pour mener résilience en secteur touriste à Dominique. Ça, c'est tout pour nouvelle en Non, Nous sommes Shakira Pierre John. Au revoir. Thank you, Shakira. And now for your weather update. Moisture and instability trailing a tropical wave are expected to produce an increase in cloudiness with brief showers over the island during the afternoon. Most of the shower activity associated with this wave should remain to the south of the region. Breezy conditions will be maintained. Additionally, an increase in dust haze is expected across the area throughout the day. People with respiratory sensitivities should take precautions to avoid complications. Slight to moderate seas are anticipated during the next 24 hours with wave heights speaking to 7 feet in eastern coastal waters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominic on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis.dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production Team, I am Julian Morris. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe. <music>